How many of BYU's high-profile games made the top 100 list of the best games of the upcoming season? We'll delve into that courtesy of 24-7 Sports. We'll also talk about BYU basketball. I was breaking some news yesterday with BYU officially set to hire Cahill Fennell as their new head coach. We'll talk about him and what he brings to the program. All that and more on today's edition of Locked on Cougars. You are Locked on Cougars, your daily podcast on the BYU Cougars. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everybody? I'm Jake Hatch, your host here on Locked On Cougars, your resident BYU insider. I work for the Zone Sports Network in Salt Lake City, Utah, as the executive producer of DJ and PK in the morning. Some of you may know me by my radio alter ego, Yawk, but a big thank you, first off, for making us your first listen of the day. Always appreciate you guys taking time to check out this podcast. If you're watching us on YouTube, hit that follow or subscribe button down this lower right corner. I'm pointing to it. If you have not already, we're over 600 subscribers. We are still giving away some of that swag I have mentioned earlier on this week i uh, got a hat and a pullover I'll let you pick which one you want to win i'm going to keep the entries open until friday so tomorrow show be the final day you can enter to win that gear and if you want to get entered we'll announce the winner early next week uh, memorial day weekend's probably a good time to announce that so we'll make sure that you guys get that gear in hand so you can celebrate summer appropriately with that and thank you by the way for all of your submissions I actually had a little bit of an avalanche of them coming yesterday so a huge huge thank you for your support and obviously Thank you for subscribing to the show. All right, getting going on today's show. Brandon Marcello from 24-7 Sports did a really cool piece earlier this week featuring what he considers the top 100 games of the upcoming college football season. And BYU featured in this, but there was a game that's missing from this that I'm actually surprised he did not put on this list. The first game that checks in is BYU hosting Arkansas on October 15th, number 52 on Brandon's list. And I'm not surprised by this one because Arkansas was a little bit of a revelation last Last year, Sam Pittman did a really good job getting the Razorbacks being more of a competitive team in the SEC. I think he's done a really good job at rebuilding the Hogs into being what they are. And I think good times are ahead for Arkansas if he can continue on this track. But they are coming across the country in mid-October to play BYU at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. I am very much looking forward to this because we talked about this a couple weeks ago. Tennessee backing out of that season opener in 2023 in Provo. It didn't sit right with me, but it's not all that surprising. I'm actually very impressed with Arkansas being willing to come to BYU in mid-October of all times of the year, travel across the country, and play BYU in their home venue. This is the way that BYU should pursue deals like this. If you're going to have high-level opponents, try and get the first game in Provo first. Get the return games if you have to do that or return game after you get the home game because it's happened far too often where BYU goes to a place like Tennessee and then they say, well, we got some money here. Let's, Let's buy our way out of this. So, Very impressed with Arkansas. They'll be coming in with a very, very high-powered team. K.J. Jefferson is actually one of the quarterbacks out there. If you have not paid attention, who is a very high-level player, a true dual-threat quarterback who could give BYU fits. But it'll be a very interesting game, I think, to see those two match up. Number two for BYU on this is number comes in at number 88. That is the BYU at Oregon matchup. And just a little bit of a teaser ahead, tomorrow's edition of the show, it's going to be a crossover edition with Locked on Ducks, the Locked on Ducks podcast. Spencer McLaughlin, the head, uh, not the head, uh, coach the uh host of locked on ducks he'll be joining me we'll talk a lot about this matchup and i'm i'm also not surprised by this game making the list either because byu going to odson should make for a very entertaining atmosphere byu fans we all show up in droves and play uh everywhere byu plays byu fans are there there's a very strong byu presence on the west coast up there in the northwest there will be a bevy of blue and white in the stands at odson i would expect on uh, September 17th when these two teams square off. And I look forward to this game. Dan Lanning has got a lot of building to do uh, with a very talented roster, but he's got to make sure that he has his guys rolling from the get-go when it comes uh, to the Ducks. This is a program who's got national championship aspirations. We all know that Uncle Phil Knight has been hell-bent 
on winning a national title before he departs this earth with his alma mater, the Oregon Ducks, has not uh, been able to get there quite yet. They've been to the national title game, but they have not won that mythical national title. And uh, he'll be chasing that. And hopefully Dan Lanning, I, as I'm sure he is expecting, will be the guy to lead them to the promised land. But I look at this matchup, and I think BYU is actually poised to go to Ots and to make some noise. Oh, that rhymed. Uh, but that could a fun uh, game i think i think i've heard a number of you are planning on making that trip to Autzen. uh we'll see if i'm able to make the trip i have to kind of balance both my radio res responsibilities with my desire to travel to all these games i'd love nothing more and just this is an aside to be able to say okay i'm traveling to every away game but there are financial means that need to be you know considered when it comes to traveling to these games but i can tell you this much i if i can manage it i'll be traveling to as many away games this year as i possibly can whether that's with radio whether i uh, drive to vegas which i'm actually planning on i will be planning to be in vegas for that byu notre dame game but it's just it, it's one of those things that i love when byu goes on the road because cougar nation Y'all show out. There's absolutely no doubt about that. It's actually really fun to see you up there. So I think BYU to Oregon, very easy choice here. And then the final one here was a bit of surprise because there's one game that I think should be on this list that's not, but the number 99 game on November 5th, BYU at Boise State. Obviously, BYU will be looking for revenge after the egg they laid last year in Provo against Boise State. Man, was that a game that BYU wants to have back. The fumbleitis showed up for Tyler Algier, Lopini Katoa, and seemingly everybody else on BYU's roster in that game, but they will be going to Boise where it's traditionally been a place that BYU struggled to play, but the last time they were there, we all remember, was it the first or it was the second play of the game. Tyler Algier puts that one foot in the ground, cuts back against the grain. He's off to the races and from there on out, BYU just ran roughshod over Boise. The uh, the blue turf, Alberton Stadium used to be a sh little shop of horrors, just a, a nightmare scenario for BYU to go there and play games. It's no longer that. The, the mythical status that the blue turf had for many, many years, it seems to have worn off, especially in BYU's case. So I think that BYU is very much uh, going to be a team that can go to Boise State, get the win there, and I'm not all that concerned with them missing out on an opportunity there. But obviously, going on the road, you got to be very careful. The interesting part about this is they let Left the uh, Brandon, speaking of 24 7 sports, Brandon Marcello, the writer of this, left BYU against Notre Dame in Las Vegas off this list. I think that honestly, that truly is, I think, the game of the year for BYU. I know it's a neutral side game. There's a bevy of BYU fans out there who are beyond upset that it is the Shamrock series, which allows Notre Dame to consider it a home game. There's so much that goes into this, but this is the game of the year, I think, for BYU. Notre Dame's probably going to be at, what, top 10 at the very worst preseason uh, team. BYU's going to be top 20, I would imagine, maybe even top 15. This is a game, if everything goes according to plan, you could have two top 15, possibly two top 10 teams if BYU is running the table at that point, squaring off in Las Vegas. How this does not make the top 100 list, I think Brandon Marcello may have missed out on this, but we've already discussed earlier this week the 24-7 sports has also missed out on Jaron Hall being a top 25 quarterback in 2022. So maybe par for the course for that outlet this week when it comes to the BYU Cougars. But the good news is, a lot of high-profile games for BYU. The, the this the glory and the the concern for BYU football is you have all these big games. The good news is in the past two years BYU has been more than capable of, more than capable of winning most of those big matchups. They have laid eggs, obviously. That UAB bowl game they laid an egg. They did not want to be there. Players have admitted as much. Left a very sour taste in their mouth because they knew that they could have done much better against the Blazers. That Boise State game, obviously, the fumble issues and BYU wants that game back. Well, you have an opportunity here. The good news is there's some high-profile matchups for the Cougars. You go out and win them, you're going to be right back in the national consciousness, and there's no reason to stay right there as you go into the Big 12. That's the positive if you're BYU. But I, I, I'm looking forward to the season. I've told you guys all along, I look forward to BYU, the BYU store, their new T-shirt is out, their game day T-shirt, if you didn't see it. The last ride is what they're calling it uh, with regards to the final year of independence for BYU football. It's not a bad slogan, but – Kind of workshop that a little bit better, I think. Maybe, maybe we'll workshop that and we'll think about that. What would I call this final year of independence for BYU if I were to name it? Because you remember back under Bronco Mendenhall for about three or four years in a row, they had a slogan each year, the quest for perfection, all that stuff. Uh, so it'd be interesting to see how things go this upcoming season for the Cougars. But I, man, 
this is a good season to be going out on if you're BYU in your final year of independence. There's some big, big matchups. I'm just surprised that Notre Dame BYU did not make this list. But hey, par for the course, apparently, with 24 7 sports overlooking something. All right, <laughs> enough of me taking digs at 24 7 sports. All right, coming up next, uh, we'll talk a little BYU basketball. I broke some news yesterday on kslsports.com. BYU basketball has their new assistant coach in place, reportedly. We'll get to all that here momentarily. First, though, a word on our friends over at Built Bar. We've been asking uh, Built about getting a granola bar, and they have delivered it. The Built granola bars are here. They come in three unbelievable flavors chocolate peanut butter, chocolate coconut, and white chocolate berry. We want to try all three flavors. You can get a mixed box at built.com right now to give them all a shot any of you who are out there who love granola you need to give these bars a shot because they are the most healthy and delicious protein slash granola bars you will find they're different from any other built bar any of their built puffs but you guys got to give them a shot 150 calories 15 grams of protein and just four grams of sugar and the best part is covered in 100% real chocolate, just like every other built Bar out there. They're made with collagen protein, which helps your body absorb more efficiently that protein and provides tons of health benefits in its own right. So give it a shot. Get to built.com right now. By the way, on the regular built Bar front, uh, some of you probably have tried this flavor. If you have not, you need to give it a shot. The Grasshopper Cookie. It is the top five pantheon of all of the built Bars, in my opinion. It is available for a limited time right now as well. So built.com, order all of it now. While you're there, use the promo code LOCKED15. That's L-O-C-K-E-D-1 for 15% off your order. Once again, promo code LOCK15 at Built.com. Get enjoy the best tasting protein bars and granola bars with our friends at Built Bar. Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. For your next listen, make sure you guys check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast. Excuse me. It's got the biggest stories of the day, instant reactions, big game recaps, and of course, the take of the day. Available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, or ever you get your podcast. All right. I will give the Salt Lake Tribune credit. On May 11th, there was a report that came out from Kevin Reynolds from the Salt Lake Tribune, the intrepid new reporter for the Tribune, saying, Sources, BYU set to hire Cahill Fennell as their new assistant coach. Now, I did not have a problem with him reporting that. I'm going to be very clear about this up front. I just was of the opinion they jumped the shark with regards to his reporting because Cahill Fennell, at that point, on May 11th, so going back almost two weeks, no, over two weeks now, he had never visited Provo, visited BYU, when that report came out. Was he in contention for the job? Absolutely. freaking lutely He was on the short list for BYU from the day that they started looking for an assistant coach to replace Chris Burgess. He's got connections with Mark Pope's staff, and he was a guy that BYU was already looking at. But to say that he's going to be hired when he had never even visited campus, or even formally interviewed for the job, he jumped the shark there. Well, last week, Cahill Fennell, along with a few other candidates, was on campus visiting BYU, formally interviewing for the job. And I heard yesterday from two sources, one of them with direct knowledge, because one of them with direct knowledge because they are boots on the ground in Louisville, that Cahill Fennell will be the new assistant coach for the BYU men's basketball program. I think this is a very savvy hire if you're Mark Pope. This is a guy who comes to BYU with four years of what we call power six experience. And none of you are probably saying, well, it's power five. It's No, it, the power six in college hoops includes the Big East Conference. They actually have a sixth power conference in college basketball. Excuse me for a moment. But the biggest thing is, is you see all of the, you, you see all of those programs who are competing at a national level and Louisville aspires to compete at a truly national level. This has a program that has national championship aspirations. Chris Mack was their head coach for four years. Cahill Fennell was on that. Stuff. The first three, he was the director of basketball operations this past season. He was an assistant coach for Chris Mack before Chris Mack, uh, agreed to a buyout with the university. They, in essence, fired him because of the fallout with a former assistant, Dino Gaudio, caught on tape saying that I'm going to I mean, turn you in. For, it, was, it was an extortion case. That, that's what it turned into. They had NCAA implications and whatnot. They eventually cut ties with Chris Mack midseason. Fennell uh, was at Louisville through the end of the year, but he has been a, essentially a free agent since then. I think this is a very savvy hire because he's got that experience at the Power 6 level, and BYU is going to be a Power 6 pro program in college hoops in just over a year now they got one more year of west coast conference play and then they will be big 12 bound and having an assistant who's got experience at that level has recruited at that level has coached at that level 
You cannot discount that. I'm not saying that uh, guys like Cody Feger or, and or Nick Robinson aren't worth their weight as a, as assistant coaches. I'm not saying that at all, but they don't have the experience that Cahill Fennel has. That is what I like about this hire. He comes in with power six experience. He's going to be a guy who's able to hit the ground running. He's got a very different uh, background with regards to the stops he's made. He's been at UT uh, Permian, Basin, Permian Basin in Texas at the Division II ranks. He coached under uh, Barrett Peary, of course, a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints at Portland State. He was on his staff before going to Louisville. He is from California, so he's got recruiting ties in the Southeast. He's going to go home to his home turf in Thousand Oaks, California. He played at the University of Redlands there in Southern California in his college days. And he can even go, I guess, to the Pacific Northwest, Texas. The nice part is Cahill Fennel is well-traveled despite being a very, very young man. And the other thing I like about him, and this is just an aside, is he's very entrenched in standing up for his morals and his uh, his feelings, his his stance on things. He doesn't get budged off of this. I, I really, he stood up in the Breonna Taylor case and really stood firm in the face of a lot of going on there in Louisville. This is a guy who I think is going to come to BYU with kind of an outsider perspective, but at the same time, he knows what he's getting into. I have talked with enough folks who understand, who have uh, it's kind of explained what the dynamic of BYU is. He came out here, checked things out. I'm sure it was made explicitly clear what BYU's expectations are for him as he takes over as an assistant coach. Uh, that announcement could come as soon as Thursday, the, today's podcast. I'm recording this Wednesday night, so you could have already seen the official announcer from BYU by the time you see this show, but I really really like this hire. I think this is a very savvy hire. I think Mark Pope was thinking outside the box as he typically is wont to do. He could have easily gone, okay, uh, Paul Peterson, Wasatch Academy, you got connections to the state. Come on over. Let's be that. Uh, I honestly think under former uh, head coach Dave Rose, that very much probably would have been the hire, and that probably would have been announced m much more quickly than what the Kill Fennel situation was like. But I think that Mark Pope has been very, very meticulous at looking at his options. He's exploring multiple different avenues as to which coach he wants to hire that type of a deal and i think the good thing is he settled on a guy that he felt was in the running from the get-go but he made him earn it that's the good news is Cahill fennel had wasn't just a guy that BYU said hey Cahill, you want to come over here and coach no he had to compete and obviously beat out other candidates for the job and i really think this is going to be a hire that byu basketball fans are going to enjoy like i said he's a guy who's not a member of the predominant faith at byu the church of jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. He has got a minority background. He comes to BYU with those recruiting connections all over the country. I think this is a very, very savvy hire for Mark Pope, and I think it'll pay dividends as they get ready to go into the Big 12, because uh, uh, just not to rehash it again, he has that power six experience. He has been at the highest levels of basketball. Louisville is a program that is expected to win national titles. That's why Chris Mack was fired. They were 13 and 19. They finished 11th in the ACC. That is completely unacceptable if you're the Louisville Cardinals. And I'm going to expect that's going to be unacceptable for the BYU basketball program. I know that Mark Pope would consider that completely unacceptable, even as BYU gears up to go into the Big 12. There are going to be some rough patches as they make this transition. There's there There is no doubt in my mind that they are going to have rough patches. The biggest thing you need to avoid is, or not avoid, the biggest thing you need to do is try and smooth out those rough patches as much as you possibly can. A guy like Cahill Fennel, he has been on the other side. He has been in the big time. He can kind of explain, okay, here's what you, here's a pitfall. Here's how to avoid it. That is what you need if you're Mark Pope as, as, as one of your assistant coaches. So I think this is a very savvy hire, and congratulations to Cahill Fennel. Very much looking forward to speaking with him. Hopefully we can get him on the podcast. I'm sure there'll be an introductory press conference whenever the official announcement comes from BYU. But like I said, that could come as soon as today. But knowing BYU, they could sit on it for a week just because they like to be like that. Just It's kind of how things go. You have to make sure I's are dotted, T's are crossed, and contracts are signed. I get all that. You got to make sure that everything's buttoned up before you make the move. But I think this is a very... Very good hire for BYU, and I, I'm looking forward to finally meeting Cahill Fennel and actually talking with him and finding out what attracted him to BYU in the first place. All right, coming up here in just a minute, we'll round out today's show. It'll be a little bit of an abbreviated show. It's not the longest show of the week, but we are going to talk about another member of the Top 50 Player Countdown. We're going back to the national championship season and one of the single individual great seasons that BYU had, a guy that many might not remember. We'll talk about him next. We'll also catch up on everything else going on in BYU sports. Uh, 
uh, got BYU baseball in action. Also BYU golf. They will be getting, they will be beginning their play in the NCAA championships as well. We'll get to all of that here in just a moment. All right, time now to talk a little bit about what's going on with BYU and everything else that we need to catch up on before we go on today's show. But let's start off with our top 50 player countdown. And today we go to the tight end position. BYU, one of the more rich uh, position histories they have is with their tight ends. And David Mills is a name many of you might uh, have been like, oh yeah, I, f- I forgot his name. Well, he has one of the single greatest individual seasons as a tight end. And I was trying to debate where I would have put him in this uh, pantheon of the greatest players of BYU football. Well, I thinking about it, I'm like, you know what? This is a guy who absolutely needs to be on this list because in 1984, the year BYU won the national championship, he had an absolutely monster season. Pretty nondescript career before that. Only six receptions in 1981 before uh, three receptions in 1983. He had two touchdowns in 1981 on those six receptions. So for a grand total of 98 yards and nine receptions through two years of playing for BYU in the early 80s, you're not, okay, whatever. Let's see what he can do. Well, in 1984, he busts out with 60 receptions, becomes one of the favorite targets of Robbie Bosco, garners 1,023 yards total on the season. And oh, by the way, had seven touchdowns in his own right. He averaged 17.1 yards per reception in 1984. One of the single greatest seasons amongst a pantheon of great tight ends in BYU history. But David Mills absolutely needed to be on this mix, be on this list and be in the mix for this top 50 player countdown. A guy, a local product from Alta high school up there in the Sandy area, uh, very nondescript type player. And, but the thing is that that single season right there, you cannot ignore it because it helped BYU win a national title. And that earns David Mills a spot in the top 50, what we call the old timer slash non-independent era players of BYU football. And I'm really enjoying this countdown, by the way, because I'm able to kind of re-look at how guys interacted or not interacted, how they performed for BYU football during their careers and what they accomplished, I guess, is the biggest thing in their career. Like I said, David Mills, the single season kind of pushes him over the top because it's one of the single greatest seasons that we've seen from a tight end in BYU history. But there's other tight ends who would argue, well, I had more of a body of work than David Mills. Well, guess what? Most of those tight ends are probably going to be on this list going forward because going from 50, we'll go all the way to one in the countdown here. But it's kind of a fun thing to do because honestly, I hadn't thought of David Mills before I started kind of looking at top players and BYU. I'm like, oh yeah, David Mills has got to be on this list. It's just one of those things. It, it does. You got to be on there. All right. Other things before we go on today's show is best of luck to Bruce Brockbank and the BYU men's golf program. They have the NCAA championships this weekend. BYU has an interesting circumstance because they will be playing their first, uh, their first round. They'll be playing their Sunday round of the group play part of this, this, uh, Current the uh, man, what I'm trying to say, they're going to be playing their their Sunday round today. That's the, so the way things go, the NCAA allows BYU to play their Sunday round on Thursday, and that will count on Thursday. So if BYU puts up a good score on this in this round, where they'll be playing by themselves, it could be an advantage, but also could be, be to their disadvantage as well as they go into the weekend of the NCAA championships. It's kind of a weird circumstance, but it's the way that the NCAA has fought to get around the BYU rule where they will not participate on Sunday. And by the way, there's a report out there that the Big 12 and ESPN slash CBS with regards to the new television rights could start playing college basketball games on Sundays moving forward. Uh, I had a good friend, uh, one of the, uh, who was it? I think it was Josh Williams from the Locked On Sooners podcast. He was like, Jake, what's BYU stance on this going to be? I said, John, I can tell you this thing. BYU ain't playing games on Sunday. That's just not how BYU operates. It doesn't matter if they're in the Big 12, the WCC, the Mountain West Conference, they will not play games on Sunday. That contract will be amended to have BYU play games whenever else, but it will not be on a Sunday in Provo. If BYU shocks all of us and decides to play a basketball game on Sunday, well, might as well start looking around to see if pigs are flying. That That's kind of the, the frank answer I'll have for you guys, but it's it's a big opportunity for BYU golf. They are playing in the NCAA championship, championships for the first time since 2019. This is a program who has national championships in their past in golf. Carl Tucker did an incredible job building BYU into a juggernaut. Bruce Brockbank is a protege of Carl Tucker's and a really good job for many, many years leading the BYU men's golf program. So best of luck to BYU men's golf. Hopefully they have a a great run here in the NCAA championships and hopefully they can find themselves in contention, but you got to take care of business That, that you're going up against the best. We're talking about multiple guys in this year's NCAA golf championships will be on the PGA tour next year. 
this is the next breed of great golfers going out into the pro rank. So if you have an opportunity to do it, check it on Golf Channel this coming weekend. It'll be a great opportunity to watch BYU in action. All right, that is going to do it for today's edition of the show. A huge thank you once again for making this your first listen of the day. Uh, a reminder for you guys, tomorrow we'll be catching up with Locked on Ducks, a crossover edition to talk about BYU and Oregon ahead of their week three matchup out there in uh, Autzen in Eugene, Oregon. Very much looking forward to that, so stay tuned for that tomorrow. Make sure you make your second listen today. Our friends over at the Locked on Big 12 podcast. Uh, Josh does an incredible job making sure you're up to speed on everything with regards to the Big 12. I am part of their roundtable weekly. It's always a fun time. Check that out wherever you get your podcast or on YouTube, free and available just like this podcast. All right, that's going to do it. Have a great rest of your day. This has been the Locked On Cougars podcast for May 26, 2022, and we will catch you guys manana. See ya.